First off, good morning and happy new year. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, my name is Paul Craig. Uh, I see many familiar faces. It's always nice to see you all here. Uh, I'm a county agent in Dawkins County, Pennsylvania, the river. Uh, this is, if you came here to hear the fate of pesticides in the environment, you are out of luck. You're just going to have to get another four credit, but we're going to talk about pesticide toxicity. Now we're going to use these clickers. Anybody in here ever used these clickers before? Uh, we've got some newbies in the crowd. Very easy, and, and to speed things up, I would just ask you, when I pop a question up here on the screen, you're going to have four, maybe six choices, one, two, three, four, and whatever, and you just hit that button one time. If you change, if you decide, oh no, that's not the right answer, and you hit it again, doesn't matter, it'll go to that second button. So you, and if you press it twice, it's only going one time. So I'll run you through the procedure. And the first question is how those, John, maybe you want to flip those, uh, let's, can y'all see it? Not too good. All right, hit that like. Let's see what it looks like. So the question is, what's your favorite season of the year? So you got four choices on there, A, B, C, one, two, three, or four. So you hit that, and I can tell if you're voting and if you're not voting, and I have this special button up here, and if you don't answer any questions, I hit this button and you get a shock in your hand. <laughs> okay? So right now there's about 24 of you that have done it, and you're probably a little bit shy, so if you didn't hit that button, so we'll go through here, everybody's voting now. So again, we're not going to dilly-dally around here, so we'll go, I can close the polling, here's the answer, 30% of you like summer, 30% of you like fall, not too many like the winter. So that's how the system works, and we're going to go through that. So the next question is, everybody heard about this brown marmorated stink bug? I'm still picking them out of my house over the weekend. Yesterday, as a matter of fact, I killed two of them. So the question is, and, and you can start answering as soon as you see that question come up, where did the little bugger come from? Okay? Stuff. Let's talk a little bit about pesticide toxicity. And the thing about toxicity is you got to remember that everything's got some level of toxicity. Even water has a level of toxicity. Salt has a level of toxicity. So it varies from a slight to death. And all of those products somehow affect our body. So the question is, here you go, your turn. What defines a safe pesticide? Organic, green, plant-derived, or no such thing? That's the question. The answer is there is no such thing as a safe pesticide, right? You put that tag on there, organic or not, but there is no such thing as a safe one. Here's a number that amazes me. Think about this. Active ingredients of all of the pesticides used in the United States, just in the Northeast United States, 36 million pounds of active ingredient, okay? So that's 50 W, it would be twice as much, right? Active ingredients. And you can see some of those numbers. There's 15,000 different products that we use and produce over 10,000 pounds. Just think about 
about that number of pesticide amount that's out there. 2,800 of them over a million pounds. That's active ingredient there, right? Most of them are pretty safe, right? Some, think about some of the fumigants that you might be familiar with, maybe you do some brain and fumigation, but that's some of the most toxic stuff that's out there. Exposure, right? We've all been exposed to pesticides, whether we've spilled it, whether we've inhaled it, whether we've eaten it, Five percent of all of the exposures of these products of pesticide exposure are ag products, right? And of the ag ones, anhydrous is probably the biggest one. How many anybody you don't use too much anhydrous ammonia here in the east, but they're out there in the in the west. And you can see where those numbers are, but one of the biggest exposures is the insecticide, right? So here's the question. If you are exposed what is most likely to be your injury that you're going to report, okay? So the question is, what's the most frequently reported injury related from exposure to pesticides? Okay. Is it quite as toxic? 
and the questioning by they use a thing called the signal words. Those are the four signal words that you will see on every pesticide that's used out there. Which one would be associated with the least toxic material?
just a guide to help you get through there. And understand that that LD50 is based on the active ingredient. And again, if you had something like a 50WP product, you would need twice that product to get through there. All right. Three ways that you as an applicator get exposed to pesticides, which is the most common one? Okay.
But what about your five-year-old kids or your grandkids? Uh -huh. that kind of stuff. That's the concern. That's why everybody talks about keeping that product in the same container. We all know. We all do. Oh, I'm going to remember, you know, my neighbor Leroy, he gave me a little bit of this spray so I could spray my grapes. I got three grape on And now I've got this container at home in a soda bottle, water bottle. Oh, I'll remember that. I'll remember that. Uh, <clears throat> years later, it was like, what was that product? Those kind of things. That's why everybody worries about that. And again, keeping your mouth away from sprays. Don't eat, drink, use tobacco. Here's the respiratory one. Somebody, you know, that was the second one everybody was talking about. How you get exposed is respiratory. Well, understand what happens is that product just doesn't go down into your lung and sit there. What happens is that product goes down into your lungs. And I have a good friend that just got silo gas a year ago. And what I learned from that was if you understand how your lungs are, it's like these channels that get smaller and smaller and smaller. And finally, it gets down into these things called areoles, alveoles. But that is the point where the blood and the air mixes together. And what happens if you get some kind of contaminant in your lungs, it mixes with the water, the moisture that's in your lungs. And with silo gas, it forms acid, nitric acid. These others do as well, and then it destroys that point, and that's why you feel like you can't breathe. His description was it felt like he had an elephant standing on his chest. Okay? Again, getting that down into your lungs are the kind of things you don't want to do. We've got powders, we've got vapors, we've got all kinds of things. Protecting those lungs is important. It reacts, go smoke, watch for dust, watch for fumes, those kind of areas. Okay, another question. Acute pesticide poisoning. This is the one that's sudden. This is the one where you get spilled on your groin and it gets absorbed into your body fast. Or somebody drinks something. If you have all these different symptoms, which one is not a sign of that acute pesticide poisoning? Come on, we got three up there. So that the point of it is, is there's all kinds of different symptoms. It isn't just getting the sweats. It isn't just having a hard time breathing. It isn't the pinpoint pupils. There's all kinds of effects that come with that situation. And we've got to be alert. So if you do get ill, one of the first things you ought to be able to say to your spouse, or to your son, or somebody, is, I don't feel good. And I was just applying, or I was just mixing pesticides. That ought to be a clue, okay? Not like the vet, where you got to figure out what the heck's the matter with that cat. You can tell and communicate what those things are. So what is an applicator supposed to do? Well, first off, read the label. How many times have you heard somebody stand up at one of these meetings and say, read the label, read the label? Read the label. That signal word right there on that label ought to tell you immediately, well, I better be a little more cautious with this product than I was with this product, okay? Follow those signal words, follow the protective equipment that's recommended right on there. It tells you what kind of gloves to wear. It tells you if you need a respirator. It tells you how long to stay out of it. That's all on there. Take care during that mixing and handling. That's probably the most likely time that you as an applicator are going to be exposed to the highest risk of the pesticide. It's during that mixing, handling, getting it out, picking it up, taking it here, going to the distributor and bringing it back. Okay? 
Not so much when you're sitting in that enclosed tractor with that boom 25 feet behind you on that spray. Okay? Select the least toxic products, be a concern, and then follow up with cleanup. Okay? Keep those rubber gloves clean. Keep that rubber apron clean. Wash up when you're done before you go in for lunch or make phone calls when you left. All right, so let's review. We're going to run through these quick. I'll appreciate it to just answer it. We're going to go through the same questions a second time, and we're going to go through here. So I'll answer the question. What, what's the definition of a safe pesticide? Here we go. Okay. What was the most likely reported injury from pesticide exposure? Pesticide exposure, what one? All of those are signs of chronic pesticide exposure except for one. skin irritation. One of those signal words is a key that I don't want this on my skin and I don't want it in my eye. LD50, which one is the most toxic? one about absorption into our bodies. Which one of those is most, the highest rate of absorption into our bodies? Acute poisoning, all of those are symptoms except for one. 